All right, man. Well, welcome to the podcast. Before we get started, I wanted to just briefly introduce you to anybody who might be watching. Um, this is my brother, Adam Sherling. I've known him since May 5th, 1986, the day I was born. And um, he's five years older than me. He's actually flying out to California next month for his his big birthday. <laughs> um, and we're going to go camping in Big Sur. And, and you know, me and me and him have had all sorts of great conversations about pretty much any topic, I guess you could imagine. And we have talked a lot about spirituality. So, um, you know, I'm glad you're here, Adam. This is great. Man, I'm very glad I'm here, too. It's, it's very interesting. It's weird. It's weird to me, honestly. But yeah, we've had a lot of uh, we've had a lot of real good conversations uh, spiritually and just about life in general man i mean there's absolutely you're one of the few people in my life that i've shared lots of stuff with and we've shared lots of things between each other and, and can be honest with each other and whatever and so uh yeah man it's cool if we want to throw this out there in the ether then all right we can do that too absolutely yeah you know i mean i'm i'm super happy about that very thing like i mean uh i mean it's hard to p find people in general that you can talk about any any deep subject with and to have you know to have you as my brother that i feel like i can talk about that kind of stuff with has always been great um i know that at a certain point um in my personal history when i started kind of exploring different spiritual paths and stuff like i think maybe i was hesitant to bring some of that up with you kind of maybe not really i wasn't hesitant i just didn't know exactly how you, know, you were going to react or how the conversation was going to go but i remember yeah. when i moved back from california to Carrollton, and you you hung out with me one one weekend i guess when we had moved some furniture into the new house and stuff and i just remember i didn't have a tv or anything and we just sat hanging out on the front porch like talking about some yeah. real deep spiritual stuff and i remember yeah. It was, it just reminded me and let me know like, oh man, like it doesn't even matter if we necessarily agree, disagree, we can have these kinds of conversations and, and it's, you know, why not? Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't think, I mean, why, why would you ever want to hold back what's in your brain or what you're thinking about or what, what makes sense to you? when you can feel comfortable with somebody when you can talk to somebody about something and go, Hey man, you know, this is what I, this is how I th see things or this is what, you know, this right. is what's going on. And, and uh, if you, if you don't have that outlet, then you can't grow with somebody and or, or learn or anything. I mean, yep. you have to have somebody else who goes, Hey man, well, what about this? Yep. You know, what about it? Uh, yeah, that's awesome. And they, they're enthusiastic about what you're enthusiastic about, but they also go, you know, uh, I also see X, Y, Z, or I like this too. Yep. And you go home oh, and sometimes you're like, shit, that's awesome, dude. That, yeah. Yep. I didn't even see that. Fantastic. You know? And, uh, you know, I think we've had that good, uh, you know, back and forth for forever. Like, oh man, like, you know, you show me stuff. My kids do too, dude. Like Jack and Will show me stuff all the time. Like, man, oh yeah, it's great. Dude. It's so great. You know, they get it. It's, it's That's absolutely right, it's man. Good, man. Yeah. You know, I, that's why I've always loved like small group things, you know, whether it's through the church or otherwise, um, just because and and I mean, honestly, that's why I ended up falling in love with going to school and like, you know, becoming a teacher, because it was about different brains getting together, sharing their own perspectives and basically expanding the collective brain of that, whether it's two people or a group. You know, uh, the more perspectives there yeah. are that you're sharing and putting on the table, then you're expanding everybody's consciousness. And then all of a sudden you have everybody walks away having, you know, gained some new, fresh way of looking at whatever you're talking about. So it's a beautiful thing. And, and I mean, you know, me and you obviously go way, 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 way back. And, uh, you know, we didn't always necessarily have those kinds of conversations. But early on in my life, you know, you were we had plenty of important conversations in the early growth oh Matthew. yeah oh well yeah sure i'm i mean not a you know and i'm not <laughs> talking about on your end i'm talking about on my end like i 
I yeah. didn't, you know, I didn't explore things super, super deeply until I was 18. You know, that's when things started shifting for me. I remember, I mean, you and your friends were always <laughs> such a massive impact on what I thought was cool and what I w was interested in, whether it was music or uh, anything like that. And so, I mean, you always played a huge role in kind of my, my GPS system, like, or, or just like my, my orientation with the world and stuff. And, um, you know, I do remember, I do remember, um, I guess it was like 2003 when we went to Myrtle beach, uh, Smith went with, with us and everything. And I remember, yeah. Oh yeah. That's my year. Real... From, from UGA. Yeah. It was great. Yep. But, but I know that was week. a big time for you. It was a whole week that we were going to be there, and, and Missy wasn't going to be there for the last half, or she was only going to be there for the last half, so it was me and you and Smith for yep. the first few days chilling, yeah. Yeah, and in my mind, I, I know around that time, I mean, that trip specifically, but also just around that time, I think that's when I felt like I maybe had some some thoughts to offer about any, you know, cool conversations we could have, so I just remember talking to you about spirituality and religion on that trip and i remember yeah. you you mentioned uh because I, I think at that time and maybe a little bit before you had started to dabble a little bit in buddhism and maybe you were just kind of in this like this like my stage of, that was the whole thing talking to smith about the whole uh the authentic presence and the exactly uh, uh, confidence without arrogance yeah that was that, i mean that's yeah that's when i broke far is that <laughs> where is that where um did you get that tattoo uh, like that summer? The book, probably? I got I got the I got the tattoo in 2003 when I was reading the book uh Shamhala Warriorship the Warriors or Path like or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh it was a late chapter in the book after you've gone through kind of thinking about all kinds of things and and breaking down a lot of stuff and and it it it, it came on that chapter where it was like you know, once you've put in the work and at that point, like I had put in so much work, uh, on for golf, like, I mean, mm -hmm. like, freaking sport, like whatever, but I put in a lot of work trying to mentally understand the game and play the game, whatever else. So uh, I got to that point in the book and I was, I was sitting there going, it's telling me you've put in the practice, you put in the work, mm. like, what are you afraid of? Like, what are you nervous about? Like, why not just go out there and do what you know you can do it's like yeah. if you're a pitcher of baseball and you know you can throw 100 miles an hour throw it 100 miles an hour yep. like don't be like oh man maybe i'll throw it 85 like no nah, you can throw it 100 throw it 100 so if i know i can shoot par why not break par and so i i told missy i was like if dude if i ever break this if i ever break par i'm getting a tattoo and because of that and i'm getting this specific one it was the chapter you know the the header or whatever of the chapter the chat page but anyway, he said, so I hit it. I called her up. I said, hey, I'm going to Paint and Wonder right now, that tattoo shop in Athens. I'm going to Paint and Wonder right now. And so I went down there, and, uh, and they were like, hey, have you had anything to drink? I had. I was like, man, I had one beer. And they were like, well, go next door and eat a hamburger. So I had to go eat a hamburger next door. <laughs> and, then, and then after 45 minutes, uh I, they gave me the tattoo or whatever. And he was, he wanted to enlarge it by like 175%. I was like, nah, man, I just want, you know, that, that little deal on the, on the shoulder. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, now my dude, I mean, Jack just asked me about it. Like last week, he was like, Hey dad, I forgot, man, what does your tattoo mean? And that was, you know, uh, 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. that? And I'm like, well, son, and when I got it, I told the tattoo artist, I was like, listen, only reason I'm getting the tattoo again, not only one of the main ones is because I can go. If my kids ever ask about it in the future, this is before I ever had kids. If my kid asks about this tattoo, I can tell them honestly what it means, right? And I can go, hey man, it means authentic presence. She said, What does that mean? And I said, It means you're not fake, you're authentic, you're you know, true to yourself, whatever. And I said, But it also means the coolest part is that you can be confident without being arrogant. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, I get that. And I was like, yeah, dude, if you put in the, if you do, just, you know, go do yes. it. And that was a big deal for me. And that's not a, you know, that's not a, if we're talking about, I keep forgetting we're kind of talking about spirituality here, which I think everything's Sounds spirituality. Good. Yeah, for sure. But 
like, I don't know, you know, I don't know. Lost the train of thought, dude. Oh my God. It's all good. No, this is beautiful because I, I had forgotten that you got the tattoo after breaking par. I knew that that time was very linked to like golf for you and stuff like that. And I remember when you got the tattoo, I remember you telling me the meaning of it. I always remember that phrase, authentic presence. I, I can see the tattoo on my it's head. It's a mental thing, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. I love that Mentally idea. Overtime. I mean, I... I love that idea of like confidence without arrogance. And I remember when you told me the meaning of it, like I really, even at that time, I mean, way back when I was 17 or 18 or whatever, I remember really reflecting on that and be like, yeah, and I, I feel what that means. I know what that means. And, you know, um, kind of maybe indirectly, I've, I've always kind of carried that with me because you're right. It's like, it's very important to be confident. And if you are capable and you know, you're, you're capable and you can offer what is needed in any given moment, then you should, and you shouldn't be passive about it and you shouldn't be hesitant about it and you should be direct and about it and just go for it, it and not be an asshole about it. Yeah. Just do it. And, and I remember uh, a few years ago when I, some, something clicked in my head and I was like, I bet the book that you got that from was from Trungpa, this one author, this one figure and then you were like, I think it was. And then we found that book and then you ordered it for me for Christmas. And I had read Trunk Bob, some of his books before, but crazy yeah. synchronicities, you know? Yeah, it worked out that way. <laughs> I know, a, man. It's an important book. Very important book, man. Very important, just part and piece of my life. And even growing yep. up 100% Christian and whatever else, like I don't discount at all the important teachings of any other religion honestly i, I mean, mean dude all of but i do yeah. have a foundation in christianity but yeah there's good stuff in every religion there's there, no religion could ever survive if it was all bad like are right. you kidding me like if it was a bunch of bad shit who's gonna follow it yeah no well i mean you have all these people <laughs> all these multiple co- cultures all around the world and they're all having spiritual experiences and they're and through their direct experience they're they're gathering what seems wise and useful and what helps them love each other and helps them be humble and helps them be awe of the universe and all these things that are just that are just fundamental to human existence and so just because they might not express it or have the same map or the same you know concepts or the same doctrine or whatever it may be then yes of course it still has value because it's just another human being that yes they didn't inherit the same ideology as the ones that got passed down to you but uh obviously they have something important to say you know sure and you know that doesn't mean that we shouldn't we got to call out ideas that are harmful and bullshit when we see them of course and then we got to call the ones that are useful and and lasting and enduring when we see those two yep that's really what it comes down to um but talking about you know on that subject usually with all these interviews these days i try to blast back pretty far and i ask that you know it's different from you it's different with you because uh you know most of the people i talk to it's either you know friends friends you're like i haven't known you I haven't known you for 35 or six years. Who the fuck are you got? Right. Yeah. Most of the people I talk to, I don't know. I wasn't I wasn't there during their childhood. Some of them, you know, like Smith and stuff we talked, but um, but yeah, so oh, yeah. knowing, you know, obviously knowing your your background and, and your upbringing, uh, I still, you know, I do want to ask questions about that, which the first one would be kind of like when you were a kid and a teenager. I mean, just like, just like me, we were going to church every Sunday pretty much because our parents were, were just those kinds of folks who went to church, you know, regularly. Um, so we grew up in the church. But when you were a kid and a teenager, did you feel connected to religion or spirituality or yeah. were you kind of checked oh, out yeah. from that? Oh, no, for sure. Yeah, 100%. I mean, not, not in any kind of like, I mean, even even though like, you know, I was exploring different things socially and whatever else, as far as yeah. who I was hanging out with and, and the influences in that nature. Yeah. The influence of church was hundred percent. Like, I mean, the, the rule with mom and dad was, yeah, you know, you can go camping and do whatever at the yellow river, you know, back with your friends on Saturday night, but 
Sunday morning, you have to be back here and we're going to church, you know? And so I would go camp out and, you know, we'd be drinking beers at, down at Yellow River and whatever else. And I would, I used to clip my, my neon clear green pager to my shirt collar. To, I remember to that it, thing. You know, I would let it go off. It, it would go off, you know, it'd be like 7.15. So I, it would went off at 7.15. I would get up no matter what the night was. And I and I hike my butt back, you know, uh, a mile or two back to mom's house and mom's dad's, and I'd I'd take a shower and we'd go to church, you know. And I, yeah. I didn't mind it at all. Like I mean, I thought it was good because, yeah, I was exploring different ideas out in the woods and whatever. But I was also exploring what was going on in the church. And and I don't think I still haven't been able to discount any of the stuff that I've learned in the church. I just can't. Mm-hmm. I mean, even in my you know, whatever drugs and things that I've done in my life, like the truths that I found in, in certain scriptures and everything, I, I just, I can't debunk them or I can't say they're wrong and whatever. And so until I can say that it's a good foundation for me, it's a good truth. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, yeah. So at, for, as far as youth is concerned, yeah, it was a big part of my youth despite yeah. all the, me being wild, I don't think that like me being wild had anything to like. That was no uh, relation with of being involved in the church or spiritual. Mm-hmm. It was just me doing what I was going to do. Of, yeah, uh, that age. <laughs> you know what I mean, well, you know, I mean, I I wonder. I I mean, I kind of asked that sort of question to everybody, but like I, I was curious. I wanted to ask that to you because I know for me. I mean, it's hard to even like, I know when I was a kid and a teenager, I, I, I mean, I had a lot of friends at church. I had a lot of friends at church and I had, I mean, I was, I was, I inherited um, Christianity as kind of my, my spiritual worldview from, from our our parents and culture and everything. And so I, I just, uh, you know, it, I didn't, when I was young, I didn't, I didn't really investigate it much. I just kind of like, Oh yeah, this is it. Yeah. I mean, I think I believed all of it because it was just kind of, I didn't really even think much about it. It was just, it was the way that it was, but it is what it is. Yeah. But I didn't necessarily have like, I mean, when I went to camp Glisten every summer, that's when I would feel amazing (laughs) a little bit more deeply about the spiritual side of it, because, you know, it just like being in that, especially like, going to the chapel at, for the nine o'clock thing that they had every night. Like it just seemed really, I, I was, there was a lot of feeling and a lot of depth to it. And so I do remember stuff like that being more significant. Um, but yeah, so I was just curious about how you felt about that. And I know that, you know, some of the camping uh, and hanging out with friends and, and your, your experiences yeah, maybe yeah, in yeah, altered yeah. states and stuff, I'm sure that was showing you, giving you a lot of interesting direct experience into like just yeah. thinking about the nature of reality and stuff. I think that the, the most important part of that whole uh, experience and, and was that there, you know, there, instead of thinking like, Oh my gosh, there's so many different, you know, ways to think about things, blah, blah, blah. There is there and there is, but there is yeah. still only one truth. And what all that kind of trying to test the limits and see what's going on out there mentally and whatever all came down to the fact that there was still just one truth for me. And one thing Mm -hmm. that's right. One thing that, you know, that I can't really get over that's, you know, you're like, oh man, that's, uh, I can explain this away or I can, you know, uh, I use some philosophy to explain this way. Mm -hmm. But in my soul, I know, yeah, that's still not just, that's not right. You know what I mean? Or that's the, I still feel like that that's wrong. Mm-hmm. And uh, no, that's cool. I'm I'm curious about that because I know we've talked a little bit about that before. Um, what? So when you say that, like, you feel like there's just there's there's multiple ways to look at things, but at the end of the day there's one there's truth. One. So yeah. what what is that one truth in, to you? But I don't, I mean, that's the interesting, I can't really explain what it is, but I can feel what it is. Like, I know, okay. I know, like, 
in a certain situation, I know if I do this, that it might be the better thing as far as people's standards, whatever else, Mm -hmm. the the outcome might be the better thing, but it might not actually be the better thing. My my brain, my body, my soul just knows what is the right thing or the wrong thing to do. I don't necessarily choose this all the time, but my body knows what it is. Yeah. I believe one, I, I believe there's a truth things. I don't think there's a, like, I, you know, I try to explain to folks, like, I don't believe there's a, uh, a, there, well, no, uh, there's always a gray area, but when it comes down to the final thing, like the sing- singularity type deal, there's just black and white. There's just one and two. Mm-hmm. So there's right, wrong. It's either truth or it's not. I don't think that there's all this blended at, you know, whatever that we can mix this into being right. This, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, not, and that's so not a, it sounds very limited. It sounds very like constricted or whatever, but it's not at all. Like, I don't, I think that there's so many things that can exist within what's right and wrong. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's a, I don't know. It's hard to say. No, you're, I mean, you're, it's, it's, it's really explain. interesting it's because. As I hear you, I mean, one thing you said was that, like, you know, depending on the circumstance, you can kind of listen to your your body or your soul or your intuition and kind of know the right thing to do, which I totally feel that. I think that's cool. But I also think that, you know, like in one circumstance, you know, it's uh, in one in one circumstance, your your soul might be telling you to turn the other cheek. And then another circumstance, your, uh, your soul might be telling you to stand up and not turn yeah. the other cheek. And so I think that intuition and that sort of thing is a good, you know, compass to use to like determine the, the, the most skillful act to do in any given moment. So, I mean, I feel that as far as the one truth, I mean, I think, you know, people say like, well, you can't mistake for the the map for the territory. Like the map is just a way to navigate the territory, but the territory is just a reality that you can't, I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. You can't, uh, no map is necessarily going to change the territory. The territory is what it is. So in that way, I think that, you know, reality itself or the universe itself is, if you think about that as a truth, then yes, that is just one truth. And we can't change that. As far as some sort of religious doctrine, I, I kind of, I don't, I don't know how I feel about the whole one truth thing, but I am super curious about, about that for you. Cause it seems like you are passionate about that. So I just think that, I mean, as far as like, I just, I just think of it like mathematically or scientifically or whatever else. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, you just think about just things being right or wrong. Like for mm-hmm. me, there has to be singularity. Like when they talk about all these physicists, they talk about, you know, you know, Michio Kaku and whatever. Like mm-hmm. they say, we can, we can take breaking things down all the way to this one little point. Yeah. Well, what is that one little point? Where did all this shit come from? Like, did you just come from nothing? Like, how does something come from nothing? How does all this expand from nothing? Like, if, if where you can even break it down mathematically, physically, whatever the hell, all mm-hmm. the way down to that freaking thing. Yeah. And so that's where that's where I can I can at least attempt to defend my idea that mm-hmm. there is black and white. There's a beginning and an end. There's an mm-hmm. alpha and omega. There's a freaking something came from nothing at some point. I don't know who what. Maybe there was no what, like, that's the thing. Like, who knows what that is? Yeah, even totally, I mean, totally. Dude, dude, I'm not even, the Bible's not telling me who that is. They're, the Bible doesn't even attempt to describe who that is. Mm-hmm. And then like Jewish, I mean, back in the Jewish day, like, who, you want to be like an insult to say God's name. Right. Like, you're not even worthy of that shit. Like, come on, dude. This is I like truth. that. You don't know. You don't know. And so for me, I'm like, okay, well, I don't know. I know there's a bunch of amazing stuff around me. I know, I know that um, there was something to me that was intelligent design. I don't believe it was some just by accident. I just don't. So people want to talk shit about evolution or whatever else. Like there is evolution that happens 100%. 100% evolution happens. We see it. It's there. But I just don't, you know, I don't think that evolution is what created all of this. I, think I mean, strong. I think evolution shows how intelligent 
the reality the nature is whether yeah. you want to say that's god or not i mean evolution doesn't discount the intelligence behind things yeah. it, it just highlights it yes in my mind yes but i'm just saying from the from 100 percent agree but the beginning of it like oh, where yeah. the beginning okay. of it i have I, there's no way i could really know about the beginning that's where the singularity stuff is. Uh, as far as like happening it's undoubtable i mean there's no defense of yeah this. it happens evolution happens oh yeah but where but where did the uh, where did the first human come from or the first dolphin or the first whatever whatever like that really all came from the same thing I, that's not what evolution shows to me like evolution shows to me that like if you are a bird and you become mm -hmm. if you become like a, a part of a certain environment then you are going to become adapt adapted or you know as best you can to what's successful in that environment and Mm -hmm. I think that happens over time for every little tiny little thing that happens. I mean, our creature, Nate, you know, uh, and they develop in their own way. Sure, that's evolution. But where did all the diversity of the creatures come from in the first place? Mm -hmm. From a certain explosion in the cosmic sky of nothing? Like, I don't, even scientifically, to me, if you're a scientist, that sounds like the biggest hocus pocus I ever fucking heard in my life. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Big Bang is the Big Bang is science's creation myth, you know, um, every uh, in, in my mind, creation story, you know, I mean, it's a theory. It's the Big Bang theory. It's not fact. It's it's a story about the beginning of the universe. Yeah. And uh, just like all the other, I mean, there's there's a multitude of stories about how everything began. I mean, the human the human brain is limited. The human body is finite. Uh, our, we experience reality through our senses and our senses and our, our limited brains, even though, you know, I, I do think that our consciousness can, you know, our consciousness in my mind, our consciousness is not locked to our brains. Um, but nevertheless, like there's only so much that we can comprehend. So as far as what it all came from, which is something that I do think about, but I, you know, it's, it makes more intuitive sense for me to say that there is no beginning. I mean, even if we look at some, a traditional moder model of God, the creator, it's like, well, then where did that God, the creator come from? Like, <laughs> there is yeah, no beginning but, in but, my mind. And I totally agree with you. So the ultimate law, like what the beginning being the, the ultimate decision is, is, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree with you. It's, it's pretty relevant. But the, but a lot of biblical stuff, at least in the in the Bible, as far as how you live your life, is mm -hmm. seems very relevant. It seems yeah. Like that's, oh, that's, that's where, where that's go. that is what's relevant how we live our lives. And you know, I just as a little side note, man, it really is on this topic though. Um, there's this there's this physicist who's a consciousness researcher. His name is Thomas Cam uh, Tom Campbell, and I've been devouring his content recently. And I don't want to go too deep into it because there's a million things. But just on this topic, you know, he says that, I mean, to him, the fundamental reality is consciousness, which is similar to a lot of other ancient Indian and Indian spiritualities and stuff, too. But he says that basically. He says evolution. Happens by lowering by lowering entropy or lowering disorder right and for him he says that for us we are just the way to lower entropy and to improve our own consciousness and to fuel evolution is to is is what he says is by becoming love and for him that means at any given situation every situation calls for different things but for him every given you know the question to ask is What's going to lower the entropy? What is going to lower the disorder in the situation? And anything that's going to fuel more disorder, that's what you don't need to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so um, he's just has some really, and he's, I mean, he's very spiritual in his own way, but I think that, you know, I, I really think it's sad that science and religion get pitted against each other, to be honest with you. And it wasn't sure. always like that. And I think no. that they can totally be good partners for each other. I, I don't think that they should be antagonistic toward each other. I don't think that having a scientific 
you know, urge to try to understand reality in, in kind of a scientific way, I don't think that that has to um, be opposed to a spiritual or religious orientation to reality. And if you look at a lot of great scientists in the past, they were extremely, I mean, they were, a lot of them were, were mystics, man. And they, they had a, a, I mean, a lot of yeah. them were actually religious too. Um, and so I just don't see those two as like, I, well, on this topic, I don't see evolution oh, yeah. as something that takes away the glory of God or, um, or the it. all or the one or the yeah, mystery, whatever you want to call it. Sure. Yeah, I agree. I mean, 100% I agree on that. Yeah. Because evolution is what happened afterwards. Because yeah, I mean, dude, <laughs> ev- yeah. you, we don't want to we don't want to live in a universe that's static. We want we live in a universe that is constantly growing, yeah. that's dynamic, it never stays the same, yeah. and that's a beautiful thing and that is intelligent. Yeah. That's what creates growth. That's what creates yeah. evolution and yeah. to me that points to that's not yeah, that's not random. There's there's definitely a creative intelligence infused in all of that. Sure. And like yeah. to me it just makes me more in awe of life rather than like oh yeah this is some cold random thing it's dead and fuck you know what i mean like that's not how i feel of course no not at all (laughs) not at all well cool man well that that was a good run um as a little as a little shift into something else i do want to because i know you've had some pretty you know some pretty cool experiences and some of the some of the ones i wrote down i by no means wrote all of the one, all, all of them down. But I was curious, you know, tell me if, tell me which, which path you want to take here. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the ghost story from South Georgia, the aquarium stories from Athens, or any Shiloh Hill stories where anything weird happened that was kind of like beyond um, explanation? Oh, I mean, if you want to talk weird shit, then the, I would say, whew, you can start, you can start with the, the Athens, <laughs> I mean, if you want to. No, okay. no, let's do that. Because I mean, I, I know you've told me that a few times and I remember even at that, you know, during those times, like being just tripped out by what was going on. So what was going on in Athens? Can you give us a little rundown? Yeah. All right. So uh, <laughs> me and Missy, our, our Missy and Tiffany had a place over there at Wood Lake. And it was this little place in, in West Athens. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I had my duplex or whatever. Anyway, after the, the lease ended up, she was like, well, you know, you can just stay over here. So we, I started staying over there at Wood Lake. And uh <laughs> All of a sudden, things started happening. Weird things, like and and Tiffany's boyfriend, Mike, he'd be there too. He started. I mean, this is a dude who is very straightforward. Like, there's no bullshit with Mike. He's gonna tell you what's up, and mm-hmm. and so he, you know, so he's there too, and I'm there, and and then and, you know, some nights it's me and Misty are there, some nights it's them two are there. We keep having the same experiences of like weird things. Like, hey man, I heard you come home last night, and you're walking up the stairs. You're like, nah, man, I stayed at my place last night. You know. And uh, yeah. he's like, no, I swear I heard you. He's like, no, no, no. no. Same the next night. You're like, hey, man, what, what time did y'all get home last night? Two o'clock in the morning? No, dude, we stayed at so and so. That's crazy. Yeah, hey, I heard you. You were in the house. It would happen to both of us. Like, I know you were there. So then became this topic of conversation whenever we were around. Mm-hmm. You know, you would say, hey, uh, you know, who, who, you know, uh, what happened last night? Were you here? Were you not here? It was a very real question. Like, wow. Yeah, it was so regular. Were you, or were you not here? And so that would be like, no, I wasn't here. So, so, <laughs> so we. I had this dream. Mm. So I had this dream, and again, like this is when I'm like twenty. I don't know, twenty one or two or whatever, and I'm not married yet, and I'm. It's a real weird situation. Staying up there with it, and I'm like, you know, okay, so I'm staying up there and I go to sleep. And I had this dream where we were all downstairs, the four of us were together, and we were hanging out, watching TV. And I, I, I was like, hey guys, I'm going to figure out this whole ghost problem. And I sprinkled water, like I ran, started running the tap, and I sprinkled water on the counter. 
And then I turned the water off and I grabbed some sugar in my hand and I sprinkled it over the water and it said free <laughs> Earl. And I woke up. And I was Ooh. like, free Earl? Like, what is... So I woke up the next morning, you know, freaking out. So I told Micah and Tiffany and, and Missy about it. And I was like, man, I told them about the dream. I was like, man, I sprinkled the water. I sprinkled the sugar on there and it said free Earl. And they were like, oh my God. So, so... They go, Missy goes to work and she starts telling some folks about it. And they tell her that that place, so there was a, a black cemetery that was bulldozed or whatever and moved, transplanted the wow. plate to build that apartment or that townhome complex. Yeah. There in Athens. And so they came, <laughs> she came up and told us that. We were, so then, <laughs> yeah. So then you're like, all right, maybe there's some uh, validity to all that. And, uh, so I I come, I'm walking up the stairs and Tiffany's coming down the stairs and she goes, oh my God, there's this cold blast around her. And she was like, wow. I don't know what it was. And I was like, no, I'm coming from, you know, from below. I'm like, oh my God, no. And then another time, uh, Missy's in her room, Tiffany and one of their friends is in uh, her room. Their rooms are, you know, the same shape facing the same direction whatever there's a hallway in between them so they can, mm-hmm. if you're sitting in bed you can see what's going on between. and all of a sudden there's a there's this giant candle missy had that was on top of her tv and this is an old school tv like a phillips like uh you know the 20 inch 27 inch or whatever mm-hmm. with the two tv like the big fucking the big back in it and there was a candle on top of it and all of a sudden the candle just went boom, off the television across what? the room and uh, man, it's her. It was the girl who used to cut their hair, not girl. It's a woman. She's a cool mm-hmm. chick. I had her a million times. What's her name? Anyway, she she uh, she <laughs> she saw it too, and they were like, "Dude, that thing just flew off television." What the hell? Yeah, off the off the TV and hit the ground. So that was that. And they're like, "Okay, so everybody's kind of involved." So then uh, a couple of days later, uh, me and Missy come back over there. And Mrs. or uh, Mike is like, hey man, you know what? Y'all got y'all were loud last night. We were like, what are you talking about? I was like, man, we stayed at my house or my <laughs> duplex. And he was like, dude, y'all were, he was like, dude, this is the guy who's so straightforward. He was like, yeah, right. He was just laughing, like not even. He was like, what the fuck ever? What are you telling me? And, he, and uh, I was like, no, 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 for real. Like we we stayed at uh, at my duplex so at Hunter's Run last night. And he's like, I was like, no. And he goes, really? And like, all of a sudden, his whole demeanor changed. He's like, he was like, no, 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 man. I heard people come in. I heard y'all like bouncing off the wall and hitting the stairs and all drunken or something. Oh my God. Nope. I was like, no, dude. Nope. We were not there. And he was, and he was, he was, he was, I mean, you're talking about a dude. That's where he started getting real freaked out. He was like, yeah, like his, his, his mind flipped. He's like, no, man. (laughs) He's like, I can't believe (laughs) that. Like there's not in his brain. He's like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a conscious, you know, logical human being. He's like, no, no, no." And uh, I'm like, no, dude. And so that, I mean, he was, he was, he was messed up. And uh, for that, (laughs) yeah, it was weird. So the next morning, they all, I mean, Missy and our, uh, Tiffany and Micah, I think, stayed at Micah's place <laughs> after all that yeah. happened. So, <laughs> so, so it was just me and Missy. So Missy, I think, had to go to work early or something. I don't know. She was mm-hmm. gone before me. And I was in the shower. There was nobody else there. I was in the shower. And, and I heard this... Uh, the phone ringing and this is back when you had house phones it wasn't cell phone mm-hmm. cell phones you know, it was house mm-hmm. phones so everybody's got their their nice little cordless house phone and answer machine and shit mm-hmm. and it was ringing and i was in the shower and i was like shit i was like uh, i'm in the shower but uh, you know i might gonna run out there to go get the phone it's not mm-hmm. my house anyway i'm not going to and so uh it went to voicemail and i heard you know the the whole voicemail greeting which you know everybody had their own you know answer answer machine greeting and everything yeah and uh <laughs> and and somebody will leave a message right so i was like okay so cool so when i get the shower i'll just call missy and tell her that somebody called her. Mm-hmm. so i get out and i go over to the answer machine dude and I, and i hit i hit the button and there's no voicemail <laughs> 
<laughs> what the hell? <laughs> no, what the- Oh no, my anything. god. So wait, when There's you were no in the shower anything. and you heard it ringing and then you heard somebody leaving a message, right? Dude, I heard not even that. I heard it ringing the amount of times it's supposed to ring. Right. I heard the answer machine pick up. I heard yeah. the answer machine go through the fucking this is Missy and Tiffany blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. Then I heard somebody leave a message. Oh and my then god. I come out of the shower and there's nothing there's nothing on the freaking answer machine, dude. Oof. It was it was it was frightening. So and then so this this place was second to last on the building on the on the townhome building whatever like so there was only one place out you know to the edge of the building after this one, mm-hmm. and you would hear people run up and down the stairs like bah, 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 all this shit bah, 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 bah. and you come outside and neither one of their cars are there they were both like biking like professional bikers like long distance bikers they would travel all over America you know uh doing their they were never there wait I mean, okay so you you heard a bunch you heard today. sounds on the steps inside the the condo or whatever of the people that were gone they're both of our stairways were connected i mean only split up by a wall like two feet thick. so both oh of our stairways so you would hear bah, 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 da, 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 people running up and down stairs then you go outside they're not there they're not even in georgia dude they're not <laughs> They're not anywhere. Ah, that's crazy. That's only. I mean, there's still plenty more, but whatever. Well, is oh. there any? Are there any other just crucial details about that? Because like that's a that's a that yeah. was a wild. There's run more. There. There's, there's more. There's the the whole fish tank thing was crazy. The the uh, the refrigerator thing was crazy. There's there's. Oh, man. So the fish tank thing, like. Um, there was water under the fish tank, but what was that again? I can't remember. All right. So back when we were kids, I got that 29-gallon aquarium yep. in, in my room, right? So I left, you know, after I graduated or whatever, and then, you know, it was in the attic and mom's, mom and dad's. And, and then uh, she took it, I think, to school at, at Cedar Hill or whatever and had it as a, a classroom mm-hmm. tank or whatever, which is awesome. So then – she, you know, the I guess it ran its course in, in school and she brought it home and it was in the attic at Providence Club. Well, when for whatever reason, when I moved in at Woodlake with Missy, I was like, man, do you still have that aquarium? And she was like, yeah, it's in the, it's in the attic. I was like, cool. So I set it up in the living room at Woodlake and, you know, got some fish and everything. And then all of a sudden, fish started. To, no, no, no! Holy shit! No, no, that's not true. It happened before that. <laughs> it happened before that. It happened at Hunter's Run. So me and oh my god, that was when me and Scott and Nick lived together at Hunter's Run at the duplex. That's why I was. That's when I brought it in there, and then we kept getting these fish, and they kept disappearing, and we were tripping out, dude. They were disappearing. And we were tripping out. Fish disappeared. We were searching filters. We were, there was no leaks. Fucking fish were disappearing. It was crazy. Holy shit. I never even thought about that. Like the fish tank was the, oh my God. So you, yeah, you got the fish, you brought the fish tank up there for Hunter's Run, yeah. which was yes. before the place with Missy that you lived with, with Missy. Missy and, and so it was uh, already, fish, were, fish were disappearing up there. Disappearing. Yeah. And, and yeah. So, so that was on carpet though. So we, you know, shit, sometimes the filter would me- mess up and water would overflow and it would make it, I mean, we saw it happen. Like the filter would get clogged up. Sometimes we'd find the fish in the filter. You'd find them stuck up in the, the filter hose. You'd find the fish mm-hmm. stuck up in the filter itself, whatever else. Mm-hmm. Never once at Wood Lake did you find a fish, period. That mm-hmm. was the difference. There was no, you never found a fish. And then you never found any water overflow either. So like, and it was on hardwood, not carpet. So like you come home, I would come home from work and I'd walk in there and, and the, oh my God. And the water would be down like, holy fuck, man, hold on, man. Man, holy shit. Uh, the, sometimes the water would be down like, you know, 30 something percent in a tank. Like, so I would go to work and I would work that day like eight hours. And then you come home and and so you have a 29 gallon tank and like 30 plus percent of the water would be gone 
and there'd be no water on the hardwood floor. And then I would sit there with a like a paper towel, not a rag, so that I could see every drip of water. Right. There was what was a piece of water, and I would rub every piece underneath the aquarium, all around it, all the, and it was all super sealed. There was no water. There was no water on the ground. It's so crazy. Thirty something percent, the water would be gone from and and. Dude, that's crazy, man. I haven't talked about that in a while, dude. It's fucked up, man. Like, no, that's, I mean, I, I that just always sticks in my brain. I wanted to bring it up because that was, that's just like some crazy stuff, man. So, I mean, you're, I mean, you were the one who had the dream that was pretty uh, wild. And then you were the one who really investigated the leakage of the aquarium and all that stuff. Yeah, but, Do you they, remember but having everybody any... there had experiences, man. Oh, yeah. No, I believe that. I'm not saying that they didn't. I'm just saying that you were among the people who did and so like you know you you had first hand experience with some weird stuff there and did you have like i mean you heard noises in the in the apartment next door and stuff like did you ever see any figures or hear anybody while you were like up and around in the apartment there was only two experience of any type of physical anything one of them was tiffany coming down the stairs and feeling like somebody brushed her mm -hmm. like absolutely brushed her that she was like dude it felt like somebody brushed up against me walking i had to move my body mm -hmm. and the other one was at the fridge when me and her and missy were talking about it and i opened the fridge to get a beer mm -hmm. when i opened the fridge instead of instead of feeling a cold you know when you open the fridge cold, I put a warm blast come behind me. Mm. And then it just enveloped me and went off. I was like, it was fucking weird. Dude. That's crazy, man. I I literally have no way of I mean, I I don't know what sense to make of of ghosts and uh, stuff like uh, that. Like, um uh, yeah. I'm totally wide open to any sort of theories about it. I just can't, I can't, you know, I mean. If we think about, okay, well, if, if it was, you know, spirits or souls from that cemetery or whatever, and it's kind of just like, okay, well, why, I don't know, why would they still just be hanging around in that form? Make they sense seem trapped. Uh, you know, I don't know. There's just all sorts of like, okay, well. There's, Why? there's yeah I, I don't i don't quite get it but i mean it happens to a lot of people and obviously like it's not like you guys were trying to like you know it's not like you try guys nor, were trying to have those experiences no i don't give a, i don't care about having that experience. That right shit. right it just happened it happened upon you you know so it's like yeah, it's so, just wild stuff well, hey, on a similar note, you know, I mean, <laughs> sorry, I'm kind of doing these back to back stories. It's just that um, this is part of the I, I do like to have these these stories on, on you know, uh, as a part of this like podcast. It, hey, it's in the uh, what's the what's the NPR say? It's in the you can have the National Archive of blah, blah, bling, blah. It's on. Mm -hmm. It's on. Uh, yeah, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> well you know it's just it's just one of those things where like the podcast started as me just asking people about this kind of stuff and now it's evolved but i still am preserving this this part of it and um you know i mean since i know a lot of your stories i wanted to make sure to to talk to you a little bit about these so i mean we're talking about hope ghosts and paranormal so we might as well jump over to, uh, to south georgia if that's cool uh, um for sure now just to give a just to give the viewer a little bit of context you know i i've told stories around this a few times on on youtube and and audio podcast but you know for me one i mean the house down in south georgia that our parents now live in uh beautiful house love that place love that property both of us do um super peaceful down there uh, just like a lot of old buildings, you know, I, for me, I always feel like there's, I feel, um, you know, when you walk into an older building, you can feel something deeper than when you walk into a newly built building. That's just the, I don't know why, you know, maybe it's just some yeah. sort of energetic imprint that's been left on that, left on that place, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, um, you know, that, that house has always had a, 
a feeling when you walk in kind of and um and when our grandfather our our mom's dad was still living there by himself after our grandmother passed away you know he i remember him telling mom on the phone that you know he would hear things and feel like there was like a family in there and stuff like that and and who knows if that was just him in his old age and kind of losing it mentally or if something really was going on and then we have other relatives who have told different stories about weird things that have happened in that house um and then i i remember i guess it was uh, i think it was probably about 2007 or something like that i was down there and you were down there and i remember i went to go hang out with scott uh, our cousin and i came back around midnight and you were in the living room everybody else was asleep and you were i think you were reading a, reading a book and you said that you had turned off the the ceiling fan but like the ceiling fan for some reason kept on moving and i remember i like put my hand up there to stop it but it, it like kept moving anyway even though it was off so that was kind of creepy and then i if i remember correctly it was that same night that you saw you know the 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 kid ghost back in the back right room so um it can you was. can you tell <laughs> can you kind of give us that story a little bit i don't know man so like me and i don't the whole night was weird but like you know me and dad were in the the living room and like uh we were just sitting there he was in that recliner thing and i was in that uncomfortable little rocking chair that used to be right when you walk down the step going down there you know that yeah blue one that was uncomfortable and i was sitting there he was, he was in the he was in the other chair and he was like so we were just hanging out we were probably watching braids or something and we were watching it and uh all of a sudden the the, the because the ceiling fan was off and all of a sudden the ceiling fan just turned on we were both oh shit we were like, and it started spinning slowly and we were like what and we looked over and the, the the light was off, everything was off. So he went over there and uh he I think he hit the chain or something and I went and turned the switch on and off and, and it went off. And we were sitting there and we kept hanging out and we were watching TV with her. And all of a sudden that thing started coming on. <laughs> like it just kept coming on like going in like faster and faster. And we were both looking oh my like gosh. hitting me. There's no like even if it's some type of electrical failure or something, right? It's, it's, it's has an intentional like rhythm or something to it. It's going, <laughs> it's intent, you know. And it was, oh, I don't know, dude, it was weird, man. And you <laughs> and there would be lights. The the lamps would work and not work, and light. I mean, it was just bizarre. What's so mm-hmm. crazy is that all that stuff stopped since they moved there. Yeah, I always ask. I mean, not always, but sometimes I'll be like, "Yo, is any anything crazy happened since you guys moved there?" And they're all like, they're not, "But, but I don't." That's not because they don't believe. They seriously, they'll they'll be like, "Not," nah. because I, I promise you, Mom, one hundred percent believes Brad when she told you know. Brad's like, "Hey, man, I felt weird in the house." He's not trying to BS her, you know? No, I mean? of like, course he's not. Saying, hey, I felt weird in there. Right. So they get it both of them understand they're like but it hadn't happened to me it's happened to, that's interesting it's happened to my buddies too like I've, had, I've, I've brought a i brought a lot of buddies down there whether it's selling brick or zaxby's or whatever i brought a bunch of people down there and they've had experiences too they're like man this place is it's it's uh it was a weird place and well before you t- i want you to say more about the the time when you saw the kid or whatever but just to give even further context like um in that same room after that happened to you a few years later you know i've had sleep paralysis several times but i had sleep paralysis in that room and was that i mean that was the creepiest thing what's up was that the bed shaking room that was the bed that that i had sleep paralysis where there was a figure at the bottom of my bed that was lifting the bed way up and banging it on the ground. And there was a dog next to the bed barking, trying to get up and like attack me basically. And it was completely terrifying. It was literally the scariest moment of my life and it was sleep paralysis. So I couldn't move my body. And that happened for, I don't know, a few minutes at least, but that was after your experience there. And it was one of those things, like every time I go down there, a lot of times I will sleep in that room 
and I'll always be like half scared and half curious about what's gonna happen. You know, <laughs> man, you know what's you know what's messed up, dude. And I, and I seriously, Missy, Missy's been trying to tell me this for a long time, but like one thing I didn't really take into account is both of my children are very in tune to all that. They have very similar experiences here and there. And it's a weird, uh, that's weird to me, man. I don't, I, I've, I don't know. I've discounted it. I don't know. What's, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Yeah. Well, when uh, you were in that back room, so this was before, uh, was it 2007 before Jack was born when that happened in the back yeah. room? Yeah, so you you and Missy were back there, and then um, it was in the middle of the night. Did you feel like you just... that was that was before Jack was born? Yeah, right. When I saw that kid in there. Yeah. Okay. And you just kind of randomly woke up in the middle of the night, and he was standing there at the side of the bed, huh? Yeah, in between uh, m- me and the the chest of drawers or whatever, and it was right. I mean, it was like you know three feet distant. And yeah, he was he was kind of va- you know just vapor, but he was visible, you know, but clear at the same time. But you saw him there; he was sitting there, or not sitting there. She was standing there. He was standing there, and he was he was kind of vapor like, like it did when you were looking yeah, at him. It didn't seem completely physical. Yeah, there was no face. There was no facial features, but there was a hundred percent like clothing features, and the fact that he was white and. You know, he had like a brown hat and he had brown and tan clothes and, you know, he was very there, but his features were not there as far as, I mean, no, there was no features, no lines. There was no you know, lines. Right. There. But there was no threatening thing to mm-hmm. him either. And, he, and it was just sitting there looking at me and I was like, I was staring at him and I was like, oh my God. So I turned over and I was like, you know, Missy, Missy. And I was trying to be all like sly about it or something like this thing wouldn't. And I'm like, yeah, Missy, you know. I go over here and she was like huh and i was like i, I was like yeah look and she was like huh? and she just didn't wake up and i was like fine so I, I rolled back over and it's still there and there's still no expression no anything because you can't see anything and then it just mm-hmm. dissipates and so when it dissipates it dissipates in the color scheme of it and everything dissipates like with what's behind it the wall mm-hmm. the dresser the chest of drawers whatever like the color scheme of what the form was just goes mm-hmm. wow and I, still felt, I still felt no fear no threatening no right. it wasn't like oh my god there's a ghost or, you know yeah. nothing like that man it was nothing like that it was like a curious figure that was in the room there it was it was freaking weird, dude. There's not, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to discount the fact that, like that's not cool that that happens. No, it's that. definitely weird, but it's it's. I think it's weird. cool that you didn't feel scared and that he didn't seem scared. Uh, did, no, no, no. There was no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no threatening anything, and 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 he certainly wasn't threatening. I and he didn't feel. like communicate anything to you. No, no. Totally curious. The only the only vibe I got is 100 percent curious. Huh. Like. Hey, what are you doing sleeping in this room? <laughs> and he looked like he was dressed in some clothing from like twenties clothes. When when Julian disappeared, dude. Now wait a minute, Poppy's hold on, brother. Julie, huh? Poppy's brother, who disappeared on the horse. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy because I remember when we, when you or me or both of us asked mom about that, she didn't quite know much about that. No, she sure didn't. And so, Brad, where did you Brad hear about that? Brad told you. Yeah, Brad knows about it. I gotta ask Brad a little bit about that. So, this was this was our grandfather's hey, brother hey, hey, who but, basically so, just so Brad, All right, so listen. So, so Brad told me this. I'm down there with my Zaxby boys, all right, and we're chilling at the place. Down there with the. This is how the whole ghost thing even came up with. Paul and uh, everybody down there was that I called Brad and I was like, Hey man, we're chilling at Poppy's, you know, going to hang out. So we were grilling out burgers and everything, having a couple of beers or whatever. And, and Brad, you know, started telling the story about Julian. And I told him about my experience and everything. And he was like, Oh my God. So, you know, 
Julian, you know, rode off on a horse or something and disappeared. And I don't what knows what happened to him. And it was some like, oh, maybe Poppy had a brother. So I did all this uh, ancestry research. Mm-hmm. And I've got the uh, actual documents. I have the, you know, the birth record, death record, everything from him dying. That's exactly what I, I mean. Not like he, he, it was the age. Like you look at the, it wasn't, it didn't tell you what happened to him. It just says, right. hey, this guy was born then, he died then. It's exactly what Brad said, which mom didn't even know about. And he, it said that in the records, it and said so, that he died I, when he was how old? Like, you know, 12 or young? something. Okay. Which yeah, is exactly yeah, yeah. Like okay. 11, 12, which is exactly like the same age kid that 12, 13, whatever. The same age okay. kid that, you know, I saw in the room that was not, it was not a kid kid, but he wasn't puberty. Right. You know what I'm saying? 13, whatever. Yeah. 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 So maybe that was Julian, man. Who knows, man? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, who knows for sure, but. But it's interesting that that happened. I don't know why it happened. Like, you know. I know. That's why I was wondering if you communicated anything, you know. It's like he just kind of pops up. And, um, well, let's just end. Let's just end with this story. Can you, because, all right, I'll give my context and then you tell me yours. So the lightning story, right? All right. Um. No, that's a so good. this is a story i've told a lot of people i've told it on my podcast whatever it's something that always stands out in my memory but the thing is is that the you know the times i've talked to you about it throughout the years i've realized oh well my memory of it actually probably isn't completely accurate for one i was really young and for two you know you have a clearer memory of it because you were older and you you know you remember it better so um Anyways, the core of it is that that me and you, we lived in a neighborhood called Shiloh Hills, which is such a beautiful and legendary neighborhood that it will always hold a, place, a special place in my heart. Uh, but we were walking down the main street, Shiloh Hills Drive, and I was probably eight or nine. Is that right? Let's see. I was, uh, yeah, probably eight. You were eight. Yeah. Okay, so I was like eight years old. We were driving. We, we were not driving. We were walking down the main street, which, you know, I say main street. It's not like there were tons of cars so flying by. It was. But, did you get, but you got you got to preface it with at at the time and why we were walking down that street. It, well, see, that's the part that? that is different because let me just. I know that this is incorrect, but let me. Just okay, tell you go the ahead. Way that go ahead. I've. And I know that remember uh, the way that I always remembered it was that, and it, that's what's so crazy about memory. Like we fictionalize and bend well, our memory. Before, but anyways, what do you remember? What do you remember before us walking down the road? This is this is what I remember is that we were <laughs> again. This is we were at Justin Burdett's house. That's what this is what I yes. remember that we were yeah. at Justin Burdett's house, and um, I guess we were we were waiting for the the rain to stop and then it finally did. And so that's why we walked home for dinner. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah. So I knew we were at Justin's house. Um, and while we were walking down the street, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Real, just one second. Please. So one weird thing is that we were, we were waiting to come home. Yeah. And we were about to walk home. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't because all of a sudden it was big strike of light and the okay. rain started. Okay. And so we had to stop. We came back into Burdett's house okay. and then we waited for the rain to stop. We had to sit there for a while. We waited for the rain to stop and then the rain stopped and then continue. We're walking. Right. Okay. Okay. Got you. So then the, the rain stopped again. We walk. Yeah. We think and it's then, clear. Right. We think it's clear. Exactly. There's no and rain. I, even though I was eight, I do remember at least emotionally and, and a little bit of the, I mean, I remember walking down the street and I remember there was kind of this weird, like, um, you didn't know ex- it's kind of that ambiguous stage where you don't know if it's about to get bright or if it's about to start storming again. Okay. 
and uh, then I think it it like started kind of sprinkling, and then I guess it maybe started raining more heavily, and then all of a sudden, just this the the loudest and brightest explosion that I've ever experienced in my life, and then yeah, I don't the remember anything. What's the rain, dude? That's the weirdest part about it, man. So I was ahead of you, like maybe ten yards. I was ahead of you, like maybe ten yards. It was still super clear. It was. It didn't start pouring rain. Okay. All of a sudden, like we came, we were right there in front of Miss Owen's house, mm-hmm. and it started to sprinkle a little bit, like a little yep. light, like bright sunshine, a little yep. bit of sprinkle, and then it just went. Cut. Chow. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about bam, right across the street on the other side of the street. And it lit us up to the ground, you know. And so, but I turned around and like, dude, your little bowl cut, like, you know, 19, <laughs> whatever, 92, like perfect bowl cut was standing straight up, dude. It was straight up, like that's you crazy. Frozen. You were frozen, you were like, and I said, Matt, we gotta run. And you were and you still were just like, yeah. and I was like, no, no, Matt, we gotta, we gotta run, we gotta run. And you, and you were like, all of a sudden you just go, huh? And you started running. And I was like, just follow me, run, run, run. And we ran past those little volunteer pine trees in between our house and, and Miss Summer's house. You were falling behind me. And dad comes up the front door in our loud ass, <laughs> loud ass front door is like, clang. Was, what is it? You boys all right? And I was like, I'm good. I don't know about Matt. He's over there. His damn hair is up here. <laughs> and, uh, and so he comes over and he picks you up like a baby. And he just runs you into the house. He's like, oh, God, we're going to, you know, and he's like, what are we going to And I'm pretty sure he had no shirt on. And I'm not sure about. I remember you telling me. Whatever. I'm, I don't know. Like, in my brain, I seriously think he was in his underwear. He doesn't remember, right. it, remember it that way. But, like, I, I swear he was in his underwear. And he came out so worried because he yeah. knew, like, he was the one that called. Like, he was the one that called Justice House and was like, mm. no, uh, it's time for you guys to come home. And I remember us being like, you know, okay, cool. It's time to come home. And it wasn't raining at the time. And all of a sudden we start walking out and it starts pouring. And we were like, Psh. we walk back in Justin's screen porch, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, so we go back in the screen porch. We're just waiting. Finally it starts blacking up and it completely slacks up. It's not even raining. And I'm like, cool, let's go, Matt. And I mean, you start walking down the street, not far. And and we start walking on the street. We get you know we're on the power lines and everything, and then all of a sudden start sprinkling a little bit. And so we, I'm like, just walk quicker. I mean, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so we're walking, and we get in front of Miss Selma's house. We're good. We're good. And then like I get a couple feet past Miss Selma's house, and you're like at her front porch area, and that mm-hmm. thing said, "Bam!" And like I thought that I was dead. Like I thought that yeah, that so loud like. It was like the second the light hit, the, the sound hit. There was no differentiation. Right, different. right, exactly. Yeah. And so it was, it was, it was the exact same time. And it was one of those deals where you're like, <clears throat> and you're like, okay, I'm dead. Like, uh, you know, somebody shot me in the head. And then you, you open your eyes and you're like, oh, wait, but I'm not. And then, yeah. and then I, you know, that next split second was, where's my brother at? And I turned around and I'm like, you know, oh, Matt's good. And you're standing there. With your, your hair. I can't believe my like, hair was standing up like that. You, but dude, you were you were just stunned. You're like yeah. waiting for a response. Like, what am yeah, because I, I don't remember. I remember dude. the lead up to that. I, but like, I don't remember anything after the, the explosion. I said, Matt, we got to run. And I started to move. And I turned around and you were still in the same spot. I said, Matt, we got to run. And you started running. That's when dad came out. And it was all <laughs> fun. I was like, oh, crap. That's oh, incredible, God. dude. He picked you up and carried you in that loud ass front door in the uh, shallow hills. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't. Know I didn't, remember, I didn't not, remember how man, loud the front was, door was, <laughs> dude. That loud, that door sucked. Like you never, you don't remember that. Door? I mean, I remember a lot of details about that house, but for some reason, I don't remember. Oh, how that, that I can almost hear it now loud. that you describe it, though. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, I think I know what you mean. I'm pretty uh, sure that mom had some loud thing on the on metal thing on the front door, and it was just loud in general because you couldn't like open and close it easily. Right. Did, like, slam it to the, bam. God, I still have Either I way. still have dreams about that house, man. I could tell you every detail, dude. But just it was a special, special place, man. I mean, I, I basically remember most of what led up to it. It's just that once that happened, I, I literally I think my my memory kind of shut off because I was just so stunned. And I, for some reason I thought 
that dad like i thought i was just standing there stunned until dad came and grabbed me but uh so i started running before dad came out uh, you thought, you thought, yeah yeah you started running 100 percent. like wow. you you were 100 percent stunned and then <laughs> i said matt dude we gotta run and you snapped you snapped out of it and you started running and by the hat but you remember how they had the curb like it wasn't like a perpendicular curb right it was a yeah, yeah. slope curve the soft right yeah so by that time you ran up that slope curve, Dad was already like in the yard, like bro. Wow. Dang, it. dude. And so and he was fucking super concerned, man. Oh, yeah. He, well, like, I bet knew. because he's that the one who gave us the go He had just called us. He knew, and it, he knew we were walking home, and that thing hit right there. He hundred percent knew, dude. That was wowzer. Well, that's a good story to end with, man. We're about to go go out to eat here in a minute but this was great dude i'm glad we did this i think it ended up well i hope so man i don't know dude absolutely i think it was great it's like midnight dude it's just always fun talking to you I <laughs> yeah i know it's mad late over there but you, hey man we're gonna see each other soon i can't wait for you to come out i can't wait bro love you bro peace man love you